Welcome to Cargan Mount Scrammore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today to give you part two of the nosegay sew along. And today we're going to be working on what I call the fiddly bits. Yes, we're talking about this outer edge all through our nosegay that surrounds the outside of our nosegay. And it sounds funny to do that, but they're actually the smallest and hardest pieces to work with. So yeah, we're going to get the hardest bits done first. So, uh, the patterns are below in our show notes. We also have a Facebook book group and an Instagram account, and the, that, those links are also in our show notes. But I would like you to go check out Tracy at the Sewing Channel. Now, she <laughs> does a lot of fun stuff. She just doesn't do quilting. She does all sorts of different sewing. And she... It's interesting to see her take on stuff sometimes like but when you go over there and check her out tell her Brenda sent you over from our our channel okay so come on in we got lots of sewing to do today okay the nosegay what we're doing is basically three parts right the cone the crown and what I call the fiddly bits. This is the edge of your quilt block. Now, as you can see on this, I left some of these pieces a little bit larger because I have big thumbs. And when I go like that, I've got nowhere to run a needle without stabbing myself. So I made these just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to, you know, trim those off at some point here to just get it down to, you know, what I need. But in the meantime, I've got, I had something to hold on to to actually do the stitching. That's an old fashioned trick that women used to do. But what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover, there's two fiddly bits. There's two different kinds of fiddly bits here. There's one with, that goes like this. And basically it's sewn exactly like that. And this is a non-bias edge, right? This is non-bias. For the pieces that I'm demonstrating for you, for you, they are on a bias, but I mean, it's a demonstration, right? And those are very simple on how you start them and where you go from them. And the other way, the other one, is this little square here. Now, well, maybe I'll show it this way. This little square right here is what we're doing. And there's a miter in there. Now, with the no Y, y seams, it's, you know, two squares and then a rectangle. But, I mean, traditionally, that's how they did this. Because then they could use up all their little odd-shaped bits and bobs. So, let's get to the triangle first. So, when you're doing your triangle... Oh, I should put the quarter-inch foot on. When you're doing your triangle and you're sewing it, there's a couple of little things you need to, to look at. Your next sew line on this piece occurs here and here. Like once you get this little three-sided thing done, where, where can you see this? Uh, I'm going the wrong way here. Okay, once you get this done, this becomes your next sew line, right? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything on this sew line lines up perfectly. So what you're going to do is you're going to push it like this and this is the sew line you're worrying about. So that's what goes under your needle first. Right? And you make sure that that is there. Right to the edge. Okay. And now I'm just going to finger press this out of the way. Because I... Okay. Want it to go... I'm just going to finger press this right like this. So now this will come together like this, right? But you're going to start sewing from this way. So basically you're going to sew from the fat end of the, the big end of the triangle to the little end. And you're going to cross over. And, you know, my quarter inch foot has a little uh, plow on the side, the side of it. Now when you get to this, you're basically going to have to slow down, get make sure that this little dog ear... This dog here, here on this side, I know you can't see it, slips under nicely and then you come out at the point of that V. And, okay, now this gets finger pressed just like so, okay, and you can trim off your rabbit ears here, but you see you have a beautiful little quarter inch right there. And it's a little bit maybe on the big side, but that's okay because you can trim. Basically, you're going to be allowed. You're going to be allowed to trim your quilt if you want. But this 
see these seams here are perfect. They're perfect for joining on your next little bit. So let's deal with a Y seam. There's two ways to do a Y seam, right? One with the bits on top and one with the bits on the bottom. So we're going to just go through and roll through the, the neutral parts first. We'll roll those through. Okay, and we'll roll this through. Okay. So there is a traditional way of doing a YC method is the way I do it. Either one is going to give you good results. Either one of them. It's not a not a test. The one way of doing a Y seam, and I'm just going to roll that over here, is to mark your quarter inch line here. Okay, you make an X and an X. Okay. Now there's your point that's going to fit on the inside. Just a minute here, let me get this pressed open with my fingers. Your inside seam. So this, this little mark has to fit perfectly on that miter, right? So that doesn't sound like it's that hard, does it now? Except here. Oh, well, except this thing might be too big or the angle might be wrong or something here. Just a sec. Okay, we had we did have a little technical difficulty. I kind of panic cut these in the morning and it was just like, okay, yeah, that's probably not going to work right. So here, we're just going to finger press this seam open in the back. And now what you're going to do is you're going to make that fit. Now that don't look like it's going to fit, right? So the Y seam, most people do Y seams where they put this part of the Y seam in first and then they sew up to that line and that X. Now I have put a little X right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this under my foot and we're just going to get that right perfect. Oh, let's get that. I want my Y at the back to be open, so lay open. So it lies a little flatter when you do that. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring it all the way up. And then you're going to put it right down in the center and you're going to hold it. Now, what you're going to do with that is you're going to take this, spin this, so this will lay now on the other direction going down. Now sometimes you got to fiddle and pull and pull and fiddle and and it doesn't matter which way you do this or how you do this sometimes they're just stubborn and you want to make sure that corner of the blue is not puckering underneath. So as soon as it's lying relatively flat you go through and you finish off your wife's seat, just like that. And I like to think of these as blind Y seams, right? So this is what it's going to look like when you sew with the, pe the square on top, right? That's the traditional way of assembling this. And then you would press this all out you know, like this, so it would lie flat and everything's good. Well, that's not the way I do it. The way I was taught to do is from the other direction. There's no marking. You already have a mark. You have a mark that goes right here, and that's where that seam is, right? So I just take this, and I just go like this, all the way up, nice and neat. Make sure everything is lined up good. Okay, there, and I back stitch one, two, and I go forward one, two, and it puts me in the same spot. And now I give it a twist just like this. I twist the top, 
and I twist the bottom at the same time. Now the blue is lying relatively flat. And it's the white that's kind of, I don't know. There it is. There it is. Perfect. Here. And when we open that up, that's what we get. Just like that. So those are our two different ways of doing Y seams. One, it, it doesn't matter. You just have to make sure when you're at that point, whether it be the point that you draw on the back of your block, like this one here, or, you know, the where you're using that seam, right, as your pivot point, your needle has to be in the down position, right? Now, there are some cases where you would want to, just let me show you this. There's some cases where, if this is a bias edge, this on the orange is a bias edge, and this is a bias edge, you might want to go to the middle, stop, and then to the middle and stop, right? Because that way, if you go like this right across, you might stretch one of them, right? So it's kind of, a, it's up to you what you what you want to do, but it's this is basically your blocks. These are basically your little fiddly bits. So what I would recommend is you do all your fiddly bits first. You would do that whether you're hand sewing or whether you're sewing by machine. I'm going to put the link for Y seams and done by hand sewing and the hand sewing playlist. I'm going to link that below in the show notes as well. So you have already seen how to do this block in, in hand sewing. So if you're hand sewing them and you're doing the fine tiny little work right, that I did on the back, then you at least have a guide as to where to go. Okay, so let's get to our ta-da moment. Okay, for our nosegay, right, we've divided the nosegay into the cone, the crown, and the fiddly bits. Well, today we're doing all the fiddly bits, and these come together really quick. Now, if you're planning on hand sewing the cone and crown together, right, like this area here, or the fiddly bits and the crown, right? This is perfect. You can you can cheat. You can run them through a sewing machine because they're small enough. You you know like and you can do the smaller scale ones, right? So it doesn't matter which way you do your Y seam, whether it's top down or where you've got the Y to the top or the Y to the bottom. Pick one that makes sense to you and that's easy for you to work with. The smaller the scale the harder that Y seam is going to be because you haven't got anything to grab onto. Like when I'm doing the Y seams for this, I'm sewing up this area here in the corner. I'm doing this part, this part here, right? That gives me my Y, but this part I'm going to hand sew onto the Y because it's easier to hand sew it than it is to try and Fiddle, fiddle and pull it a square that's you know I cover with my thumb right so that's um, that's why it's easier to do it do a smaller one by hand sewing because it's you know the Y seam is only like this long it's not that big so and these this I have to stress over and over and again this must be the straight of grain right it's like all of these blocks the outside of it must be the straight of grain Right, so that will that'll keep your block square and it won't stretch or anything else, right? So uh, if you're doing just the one block and you've decided, okay, I'm going to just do one block and see, then this side here has to be straight of grain, right? Because it in the pattern it shows this cone part being straight of grain. Well, if this is your outside edge, this has to be your straight of grain. Okay, so just. Just not to confuse you, it's just that you have to think about what you're going to do with them. So, I hope you have an absolutely fabulous week. Go check out Tracy at the Sewing Channel. Uh, lots of fun. Tell her that I sent you. Join the Facebook group if you're so inclined. You know? Okay, bye! Take care! My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now, and that Facebook group is 
got some very very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know posting pictures and commenting and it's it's been a lot of fun and the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early so you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next after the nosegay so long we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away so we'll get you sewing those curves and it'll be fun it'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on but we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and, and letting them know that you kind of like our channel, that, that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.